Okay, our decline here, average picker. So this did not go at all how I was thinking it was going to go. So it turns out, <clears throat> um, though I had lots of stuff uh, that would fit that screw, I had nothing that would get in the shackle even after going out and searching the shed up and down. Um, what we did end up doing was using a ground down Allen wrench um, to get down in there and get it out. And it's actually, you can see it's still in there. Um, but that got it out. So, you know what, if this doesn't count, it doesn't count, whatever. At this point, I'm giving up, I don't care. Um, I've already popped the C-clip off the back as well, and the reason for that is I could not find my little follower. The cats had decided to use it as a play toy, and I figured it was pointless to leave the video running for, you know, 10 minutes while I searched around underneath everything in the kitchen trying to find it. So, we do have the key, and it does work. It works pretty good. Since the back is off, I'm going to hold it there. Okay, I'll show you guys the bidding. Okay, so that's the bidding on it. And let's see about gutting it now. It does say to use a shim. We've got the Betty and Shim Me Daddy. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I really wanted to highlight this lock some. Um, I think it's a pretty interesting build. It's a fairly complex build. I already knew a little bit about it. I don't know exactly what the pins are going to look like, but I knew it had this sheath thing on it. Um, and I'd, oh shit, oh shit. And I've always wanted to pick something like that. They're back, this is one of your shims, so thanks, man. Um, yeah, I always wanted to pick something like that. And it was a really fun pick. And he built this all, oh, fudge, 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 fudge. Okay, hold on, guys. Yeah, and he built this all with hand tools. And that's what I think is pretty cool. Okay, I flubbed that a little bit, but... Um, okay. So you can see this is our little sheath bit. And we'll take a closer look at it here in a minute, but it just sits over top of that. Sorry, that's a little out of focus. I'm trying not to spill these guys. So yeah, I didn't use any fancy equipment or anything. And this is the only one that he's done. Oh, fuck, I just dumped those last pins. That's not in the hands of Bosnian Bill. So you can see. Okay, so he's got that notch cut out hand filed that out and this is just a little piece you can see you can see how he does all this in his uh, tutorials but this little piece just lays right over there okay let's see what we've got going on upstairs Trying to be very careful. I don't want to do the disaster that I did on the core here. Okay, not a lot of spring in number three. It's three has wedged himself in there pretty good. So I don't pick a lot of eleven um, hundreds. I've I've picked some. But um, this does pick very similar, or not, it, it has the same feel. I was expecting, 
a much more drastic uh, difference. But, um, oh, yeah. But if you, oh, luckily those are all the same. But if you've picked uh, some 1100s, I think you'd feel right at home uh, with this guy. Some of these little guys just don't want to come out. Um, I don't think you'd be in for too much of a surprise. So these little guys are not bounding up, bouncing up like I thought they would be. If they're caught a little bit. Making a mess of this gutting, guys. I'm sorry. So, and we do have some work upstairs. So, we've got uh, threading on two, uh, four, and five. And let's see, we've got on six, smooth, four is smooth, three is smooth, two looks, yeah, we've got a little bit of threading cut into two even, and one is smooth. All right, this has been an ordeal, but let's get the uh, camera flipped around and take a look at these pins. Okay, guys, so here we go. So we'll take another, we'll take a closer look at that core. So you can see we've got some threading in chambers two, four, and six. And of course, ground that out. And this piece just fits. Right there. And you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So you almost have, because of how it's domed, you almost end up with like kind of an undercutting aspect to that. Um, besides the fact that this is going to drift a little bit and kind of float around, but you can see underneath there we've got a little tiny gap. So you end up kind of with uh, two shear lines. This piece kind of floats around a bit. So that's some really neat piece of work there. See the file marks. Got that really good and straight considering you did that by hand, man. That is kudos to you, Alex. So pin-wise, too, we've got some crazy pinning going on. We'll start here at six. I think I have these orientated correctly. I hope so. Actually, I think this guy's flipped, maybe. Oh, no, I was being pretty careful at that point. I don't think I'd had a gutting accident. This would be our shear line running across here. Um, so we will just start with six. Key pin. And there's our driver matched to it. That just dropped. Where did he go? Oh, guys, I don't think I can take one more thing with this lock. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. I will leave everything very still, and we will get it found for sure. Um, so we've got a standard in five. And a little tiny spool guy. Upstairs, there's the driver. Really nice little pin work. There's our four key pin. 
Very lightly serrated. And our three driver, you can see he was thinking of the three driver getting up in that gap um, between the core and the sheath. I'm not sure if I, I guess, you know what, I did have an overset on three at one point. I think it was during the first real attempt on it. And there's our driver. And there's our number two. And man, he's so tiny, you could almost get lost under that little sheath guy, couldn't he? Let's see what we got here. Now this one, I'm not, I am pretty sure he was orientated this way down. Um, so this would be the shear line. I'm not 100% positive about that. Um, pretty sure this is not one that I fumbled. Nice little spool element. And you can see he's still going to be interacting with the sheath. Oh, there's our little guy. Why, why didn't you guys tell me he was sitting there in the uh, key pin, hanging out with one. And we'll take a look at one here. And that is the guy he was paired up with. And so, and then remember we've got one is clear on the threading, but upstairs. So you've got two. Yeah, so I'm curious. I wonder why. I mean, he's still going to snag. I bet he would be a little bit more difficult if he was snagging on something else, though, at this point. With all this work having been done to this. I don't know if you want any more snagging. Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, sorry for the less than ideal picks and guts on this thing. I do plan to pick this thing again some. Um, I, I originally went to my, kind of my go-to picks um, on the 1100 after uh, Lock Lover gave me a few pointers. I'd picked them before. I, but he really had helped me out um, in breezing through them, I guess, a lot quicker. Um, I think though that I could probably get the Tron in here, pick from this ledge or here and get up in there well enough. So I'm going to try some few more picks with this, um, doing it in a more traditional way or me traditional way, um, than what I normally do. Um, cause yeah, what I was doing was coming in through there with, you know, like a DeForest or a really steep hook. Um, and I was using the, well, I was using that SS Dev hook um, to get in there. And you can see it's just enough, all right? And the reason I was doing that was because the SS Dev, this is a little bit stronger of a hook. Um, than the one I normally use. Normally, this just chew, this is by Sparrows, and it just chews up these 1100s. A um, lot more room in there. But with all that snagging and have to deal with that sheath and stuff, <clears throat> I need a little bit more power, and there seemed to be just enough room for the SS Dev, and there was. But I think I can get in there with the Tron, <clears throat> um, especially now taking a look at the bidding on it. I'm pretty sure this will be an issue back here. It's kind of crazy how the key is going to line up. I guess one is riding up on here maybe, number two. So 
so anyway, um, big thanks to Alex. Again, um, I highlighted, I did a video a bit ago pointing you guys towards his tutorial videos because he actually has two different versions of these. And uh, I'll, but I'll put a link to his channel again down below. Um, some really nice work. Considering it's all hand done, I think that's just incredible. And uh, Alex, thank you for sending this one to me. We will get it out there and get it uh, drifting around. I don't know what's going to happen. Of course, I don't know what's going to happen with the Bosnian Bill ones or where there's going to be. But um, keep an eye out for this. I've already kind of got a plan for who all it's going to go to next. Um, but we're going to I'll, I'll make sure I'm sending it to active mailers and things like that because we don't want this uh, getting just lost out there. Um, I think it's a pretty neat lock. And I think you did an amazing job on it considering you did it all with hand tools and stuff and that you were willing to sit down and share your whole technique for how you did it. Um, even though I know that came out to be an hour and a half video and a lot of people don't want to maybe sit and watch something that long. But uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that, man. Thanks again for sharing this lock. I was very excited to get it. Um, it's a very fun pick. And again, I apologize for all this sloppy gutting and the thing. You know, honestly, last night I was just exasperated. I probably should have just not even cased it. I should have just said, screw it. I will repick it again in the morning once I have something that I think can get down in there and unscrew it. So, but you know, sometimes you're not thinking your best. You're just kind of wanting to get through it. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is Betty. Um, you guys have a good one. So hope you enjoyed.